Morning guys. I uh, haven't posted a video in a couple of weeks because uh, I just haven't been motivated enough to finish any of my projects. But um, I bought this thing randomly the other day uh, off Banggood. Uh, it was on, they had a special on um, and there was a limited number of them available. But if you applied a coupon, it sort of avoided their check. So you were able to grab it at the lower price. So I made the most of that opportunity and I grabbed it. Um, I was expecting to be disappointed um, but it's here now and I'm not disappointed at all um, there's two models one's got the uh, this is the ET12S it's got the higher resolution camera uh, and then there's a lower resolution camera so sorry it looks like a multimeter I haven't really given any detail here but it looks like a multimeter but it's actually got an IR camera in the back and that's what really interested me um, my, my son has a cat s60 um, which is a rebranded uh, Samsung phone that's got a flow camera and I've been using that to check on my cables and whatnot but um you know I've, I felt like it was about time that I bought myself an IR camera and this thing came up uh, I managed to snag it on the cheap so I've, I've done that but um I wasn't expecting it to work well and it's actually really good uh, and it has a data logging feature which I thought was really awesome so uh, I mean I don't know exactly why I would use it but who cares? It's there, right? So anyway, I'll um, I'll take it out the back and I'll plug it in and uh, and I'll show you that yeah I'll show you the data logging feature. I thought it was pretty cool. All right, so um, got my cover off this obviously because I've got a temporary solar temporary permanent solar array there. Um, let's fire this thing up. That's really the only piece of advice I'd give these guys is um, it needs a stand. So we're in multimeter mode. Um, it has all the ordinary features you'd expect, um, impedance, uh, continuity, AC, checking a diode, whatever the capacitance is. Um, let's have a look here. So it should have a couple hundred volts on this. Now, it is Chinese, so I'm being very, very careful that the insulation is all good, which it appears to be. 250 volts DC. So it seems to work all right. Um, what else have we got here? 179. 178. Oh, let's flip over. So this is the uh, this is the data logging feature. I don't know how do you how you change the um, the interval and the timing yet, but well, I just got it this morning. So well, that should be logging. All right now, don't know if you can see that or not. But you can, yeah, okay. So there's a green bar that's going there. You can see that it spiked up and then it's come back down. A little dip there. I mean, that, that's potentially very handy, right? Like, if I was trying to troubleshoot something, I don't know if it data logs on impedance as well. Maybe it does. Um, but if you felt like you had something wrong somewhere and it just needs some alligator clips or, I don't know, like something else to so you don't have to hold the prongs in, and I think you'd be off and racing. So, recording at 250-ish volts. So let's jump over to here. Let's grab a little bit at a lower voltage. Uh, I mean, obviously, with four, only four megabytes of storage, you're going to be limited to how much you can store. But that's still, I, th I still think that's handy. You know, if you're troubleshooting something and you've got to interfere, you know, maybe you've got fuck like, corrosion in your terminals or something. I don't know. Um, and you were trying to determine uh, how to fix it. That this could be handy. Like for, I mean, it costs nothing. So if it data logs accurately, happy days. I haven't tested it with AC. In fact, I'm not game to because I don't want to get electrocuted. Bad enough I'm doing this with this DC here. I have got a 450 volt array. Which one is it? I can't get to it right now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Look, it's, it's doing its thing. So I'm going to hit stop. Okay, so it's highlighted the stop green. So it should have stopped recording. I'll take that back into the computer. And... Uh, Let's see what we get out of it. Um, I have not tested all these other features. Oh, frequency. That's handy, isn't it? Oh, geez, maybe there is. Is there some 240 here I can test? Oh, I don't want to test the 240. That sort of strikes me as dangerous, but that's pretty cool. I wonder if I've got a signal generator somewhere that I could um, see if we can data log the frequency. That would be handy. Um, You know what? Maybe the MPPT. Let's have a look. I'm just going to pop this down for a sec so I can sort myself out around the MPPT, but I imagine that there's a frequency you could probably detect on the MPPT while it's tracking 
Uh, do I need to put this thing down? Or can I do this without it? Let's have a look. Um, again, I don't want to get zapped. So, I don't trust these prongs. I'd probably go and buy some better prongs. Ah, zero frequency. Okay, so that's not working. Let's try on the battery. I thought that because the MPPT is opening and closing a gate that it would... But it doesn't appear to. Right, so we can't record that. But fair enough. Um, well, I don't know, right? Could record that, but... I just don't have one to test with. Is there a... Oh, I've got to hit the save button to... So that's just saved the existing... To... Just have a look. Does that work? Come on. Oh, it does. Oh, it's just gone to zero, but it's tacked it onto the back of my previous scan, which is not ideal. But it appears to work. So whatever value is being shown up here gets logged into the <coughs> into the chart. But you probably just want to clear that. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a clear button right there. So you clear it, otherwise you're going to skew your log. Come on, oh, that button could be better, eh? There we go, all right. Oh, that's working. I mean, I don't know where it's getting this 50 hertz from. Ooh. Should I be worried? <laughs> uh, the shed's not, uh, not the safest place in the world. Oh, anyway, I think that's pretty cool. Let's go and have a look what data that looks like. So I'm curious if, um, because we've reset it, if it um, put any overhead on the file to tell you that the second log is hertz and the first one was volts. Um, because I'd be interested to know how it records the timestamps and everything. But um, God, I'm pretty, uh, pretty impressed. Oh, yep, yeah, sampling period. Continuous sampling. What else does this thing do? Uh, storage is at 95%, uh, USB mode, okay. I'm not super concerned about any of that. There's all of our modes again. Let's uh, let's go to the IR light because um, I have had some melted MC4 connectors around here. Um, some... Well, it seems to work. Ooh, that was nice and warm. It does have a little reference, which is cool. Uh, I think the reference is telling you that's where the hottest part is. So, if the hottest in the, that looks like the hottest is 25 degrees. That's nothing really, isn't it? Um, have we got any bad cells? Have a look for a while. Ooh. Duck underneath my cable, which doesn't look like it. Oh, hang on. What are we here? Oh, no. That's okay. That's the uh, material at the back. Oh, no. What's happened? No, that would be good. Yeah, we're okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm truly blown away by this, like 21,000 bucks, 90 kilowatts of storage. Um, although, huge gamble, right? Like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't suggest anybody blows $21,000, but it's worked out alright for us. Um, so, I've been cleaning up in here, I don't know if you can tell. I've left it way too long. There's heaps more neatening up that needs to be done. This is one of our solar patios. Um, I've got some solar clips that have come in so I can get rid of some of these zip ties, but uh, this is a 4.4 kilowatt array that terminates into this. Um, I don't know if I trust this chair to stand on, but let's get close. So, yeah. Um, let's check. Anything in here is getting hot. Doesn't appear to be. No, we're good, I think. How do you check this if nothing in here is warm? Hmm, okay. Um, well, I'll take this thing back inside, we'll get some data off it and see how it looks. So just while I'm mucking around with this thing trying to figure out how to get the data off of it, I did notice that you go to storage, it actually shows you. Uh, that's cool. I mean, you can't, 
you can't actually open it and do anything with it, but you can probably delete things. So I've got an IR capture there of my cat's head. You can't really see it because he's out of the shop, but there's a delete button here, so you can... That's pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. Um, I mean... What am I actually going to use this thing for? That's the thing. Um, so it's not showing up as a device in my computer anymore, which is weird. Alright, that's better. Different cable. Um, I don't know why my USB-C cables are fucked, but yeah. Now, I don't think you can turn it on while it's plugged into charge, so let's just pop the cable on it. Turn it on. Now this time, go to the menu. Go to USB mod. I'm assuming that's supposed to say USB mode, but it's Chinglish after all. Um, and then... All right, no USB device. Just, there it is. So we've got this. Um, I don't know why it's showing up as a CD, but there's our image. It's a tiny little image, but uh, you can barely make out his face. Um, then we've got our VOM files. So what's the VOM file? Here we go. We've got, oh wow, that's in millivolts. So, and cycles 0.5 seconds. So does that accurately reflect what we saw? I think it does. 252 volts, 0 0.9, 253, 253.7. Yeah, I think that does. Then 0.5 intervals. And then it dropped off. This last one we changed to frequency. So does it, yep, AC, oh, it says AC volts. We weren't on AC volts, were we? That doesn't seem right. I might, uh, I might go back and have a look at that, eh? I thought we were on frequency, but I might have pushed um, AC volts, potentially. I do remember it going to 50. I thought it was going to 50 hertz, and it did jump to that a couple of times, but maybe we're just going to go back and have a look, be, be clear on exactly what I was data logging, but that appears to work, so, and I can definitely see some value in that if I was troubleshooting something, trying to understand um, why something's failing or why it's in a certain state, especially with the ESP32s. Um, you know, like I uh, want to check the voltage input or validate something that the the GPIs are saying. I think that would be handy. But, um, yeah, cost nothing. And even if I only get a few months worth of life out of it, I think that'll be enough. And it's USB chargeable, which is awesome. So no matter what, if I got stuck somewhere, uh, I can always charge it up. So I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll put my finger out and go and do some... Um, Finish off some other videos at some point, but uh, yeah, I just haven't found, had the motivation recently. Uh, I'll be back. Just uh, jumping back in here, see if I can validate that error I was having. When the voltage DC, I've, I've started up, uh, we started in voltage DC, I'm going to jump to voltage AC, we're all good. Now if I jump to Hertz, cool, we're on Hertz, but you see how the AC DC has disappeared. Percentage, I assume that's duty cycle. Now we're back to AC, right? If I click to DC, then I put us into Hertz. Let's see if it's, oh, we're still in DC, so. Okay, so I can't validate what I was thinking was happening. So let me just jump back to DC, go Hertz, press voltage AC. Now we're still in DC, there we go. So you see how we've got AC highlighted, but we're in DC. So when we're in that other state, uh, sorry, in the Hertz um, uh, recording mode, the state of this button doesn't flip it. So now when I touch this, we've gone to AC. So there is a bug there. Uh, that's an interesting, uh, that's interesting. So obviously the, the firmware developers obviously uh, didn't maintain that state while you're in the other menu.